there guys and welcome back. On this week's show we're going to be making a back scratcher. Seems like a silly project, I know, but um, when it comes to woodworking you need projects of all different skill levels and this is a fantastic project to get your young ones into the shop whether it be your children or your grandchildren your nieces your nephews um, get them into the shop and expose them to woodworking with one of these simple projects that they can have a usable item when they're done and something they can be proud of um, so the first thing that we're going to do with this project is we're going to head to the wood rack and find ourselves a usable piece of scrap that we can make one of these back scratchers from. Well I've gone through the rack and found this piece of maple. Um, it's actually yet another piece left over from the workbench build. And uh, you're going to want to use a hardwood for this project. Um, like a maple, a walnut. Um, I mean you could use pine or poplar or something like that but uh, it may be a little fragile at the scratching end. So, choose your wood carefully here. Um, but remember to have fun with it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is cut this piece down to uh, an inch and a quarter wide, and I'm gonna make it a half an inch thick. The next thing you want to decide on is the length of your back scratcher. So for my purposes on this project, I'm going to cut a piece that's 16 inches long. With our blank cut, it's now time to mark it out. And you're going to have to decide some measurements for yourself, or you can follow the ones that I'm going to use. I need to have a line that is going to be two inches down from the one end, and it's not an imperative measurement. It doesn't have to be right on the money. Um, what this will be is the mark, or this will be the head of our scratcher or the business end. From there I want to draw on each side of our um, blank I want to put a mark 5 30 seconds sorry 15 30 seconds in from each edge just like that and then another one on this side at 15 30 seconds all the way down and what that's going to do is it's going to leave the material in the middle for our handle. It's going to leave 5 16th uh, of, of an inch thick or wide material. There's also some marking that has to be done on this plane here. But before we do that, we can get a circle template and just round off these inside curves here just to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. Now on the thinner side of our stock here, or um, our half inch side, we're going to have to put a, a mark from end to end of 5 sixteenths of an inch. And what that will be of course is the corresponding thickness of our handle so that we have it marked all the way along. At the end here where our head is, we're going to use our circle template. We're going to round off this corner and as well we're going to round this section off right here just a little bit 
to give it kind of fingers, if you will. So I'm going to uh, draw that out, and then I'll, um, I think I'll get out my ominous pad of paper and uh, draw it for you just to clarify exactly what it is in case this isn't really showing up very well. I'll just clarify the markings that you should have. If this is your side of the blank, that is inch and a quarter by 16, and this is your side of your blank that is half inch by 16, you should end up with a line down the middle with a curve, and a curve here with a line down the middle. This is two inches in, and this is the head of your scratcher with this being your handle. On your half inch side, you'll end up with something that looks like this. A 5 16 line, just like this, which will curve down there like that, and this will round off something like that. So once you've got that drawn out, well, we're going to head over to the scroll saw. Well, the scroll saw is one of the most kid-friendly tools that you'll have in your shop. Um, you still need to teach them woodworking safety, talking about sharp blades, etc. But all in all, this is a pretty kid-friendly um, device. So our next step now is we need to cut out our markings that we've made on our um, half inch side. And I've got a number seven reverse tooth blade here. We'll see how it does with this inch and a quarter maple, but uh, check your blade for square, making sure that it's square to your table, and take your time and cut out this profile here and save the bottom piece. Now that you've got that one profile cut, put it back together and use a little bit of clear tape. You can use packing tape or you could use painter's tape. You can use whatever you like um, as long as you can see the lines that you're cutting. And you just want to tape this thing back together. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. This bottom piece is going to be scrap. But Put a few pieces of tape on there just to hold it securely back together and once you get it taped up we're going to cut the profile on the inch and a quarter side. That blade seems a little dull to me, and uh, I'm not surprised with cutting through an inch and a quarter thick strip of maple. So I'm going to change this blade up before I continue with this cut. Don't be afraid to change the blade on your scroll saw, guys. If it isn't cutting correctly, there's probably a reason why, and sometimes the blade being dull or simply worn out is the, uh, the main culprit.
and a dull blade was definitely the culprit at, on this uh, particular cut. So let's finish off uh, the rest of this profile. Well, you've got that profile cut and now you can separate this scrap piece that you taped on to the bottom of this and you can see that it's starting to take shape a little. Now we're going to take it over to the disc sander and I'm going to round off this edge profile here that we drew earlier and uh, once we get that rounded off we're going to carry on to the next step. decided on the belt sander for that as opposed to the disc sander and the only reason I did that is because uh, it was easier to set my camera up to get the shot as well as the dust collection port was right there so I used uh, what was easiest and that's the great thing about the hobby that we've chosen there's a million different ways to do a certain task and uh, you just have to choose the one that's good for you as long as it's safe. The last and final step on this project is going to be to shape the handle and um, again you can do it in many different ways. Um, I think my method here is going to be I'm going to use the curve of the belt sander to rough shape it and take the sharp corners off and then I'm going to finish it off with some hand sanding. Um, if you're going to be doing power sanding on this, guys, please, 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 please get that dust mask on and keep that dust out of here. So, with that being said, let's shape the handle. have it. Back scratchers. Uh, that inch and a quarter cut when you're running on the scroll saw cutting that side profile, it can be a tough cut. So you might have to help the young ones do that. Um, there is other methods you can use. You can use the bandsaw and uh, that takes it like there's no tomorrow. It just runs right through it like a hot knife through butter. Um, you could also just plain sand it, uh, but again, remember about the lungs. Um, make your own modifications, you know, cut some fingers in the end with the, uh, the scroll saw. Paint them up, let the young ones color them with markers, decorate them for dad for Father's Day or mom for Mother's Day or birthday gift, Christmas gift. A handmade gift from a child is, uh, is one of those things that really tugs at the heartstrings. So, now, is this a silly project? Yeah, yeah. 
is it uh, is it easy and probably way beneath most of your levels of woodworking most likely yeah but uh, is it worthwhile to make them bringing a child into your shop and exposing them to a hobby that served you so well for so long definitely get those kids in the shop and make the simple projects um, I made a couple because you know oh, you can't go wrong guys thanks for watching and I'm gonna see you again next week with yet another Wow, woodworking video. <laughs>